recuerdo que había una muchacha muy bien arregladita, muy todo eso, y a mí me extrañó enormemente porque esta chica no sabía leer, no había ido a la escuela. Entonces yo me, me extrañaba, ¿no?, que una chica de mi edad y todo eso, de que no tuviera ni siquiera esos conocimientos elementales. Women's lives changed radically. The Republican government had improved things in allowing divorce in exceptional circumstances, but anarchist women wanted more. In 1936, they founded their own pressure group, Mujeres Libres, Free Women. Yo creía que era una cuestión de mujeres mayores, de 30 años para arriba. Entonces yo no llegué, sí conocí algunas que estaban en Mujeres Libres, pero es que tampoco me hablaron ni me hicieron, ¿quieres apuntarte? No tenía ni el pur, ni pur, ni contra. ¿eh? Luego ha sido cuando yo, que compraba el, el periódico y la revista, ¿eh? luego yo le he dado toda la, la importancia que aquello tuvo. For the first time in Spanish history, women had a real say, politically, economically, and in the home. The Spanish term, for example, mi mujer, meaning my wife, but literally, my woman, was immediately replaced by mi compañera, comrade. Había un verbo que se popularizó, fraternizar. Fraternizar, aquello era la, la cuestión de fraternizar. Lo, los primeros días, desde luego, fue algo... Magnífico, tú. Mujeres Libres numbered 30,000 women at its height. They set up a women's college in Barcelona, which by 1938 was taking in 600 to 800 female students per day. Y lo que querían, sobre todo, es cultivarlas y prepararlas para que tuviera un rol en la sociedad. Porque decir, tú eres una mujer, eres una, ante todo una individualidad, ¿comprendes? Entonces, tienes derecho... A, a, a escoger la vida, no estás condenada, no estás condenada a estar en el hogar, ni estás condenada a ser madre, ni está, estás sobre todo el derecho de ser tú misma, lo que tú quieras ser, ¿no? They opened paternity hospitals and schools and organized military training. There were, particularly among the anarchists, very fine, very combative women militias, and... Um, and Ethel went into that world where she would have met people like her, young working class women who were involved in a fight for workers' power and a fight against fascism. I had difficulty deciding which soldiers were young men and which were girls. They were dressed exactly alike, but as we drew nearer, we saw that all the girls had beautifully permed hair and were strikingly made up. Through the streets, naked murder is stalking. The ever-present spectre in a country divided against itself. In the rising of fascists against the government, brother raises his rifle against brother. Seville, Saragossa, San Sebastian, from all these places known so well to holidaymakers in times of peace, pictures unfold the cataclysm that has taken toll already of 20,000 lives. In Spain, as in the wider world, stories of violence attributed to anarchists made the headlines more often than their revolutionary experiments. For many anarchists, non-violence is central to their cause. However, there can be no doubt that in the prelude to and during the Civil War, hundreds of churches throughout Spain were attacked and burned. As many as 700 priests in Catalonia were killed. Some of these atrocities must be blamed on anarchists, but there are many groups involved with the rebellion against conservative Spain. Trotskyites, communists, and the right wing themselves, seeking to vilify anarchists and the republic generally. At the early stages of the Spanish anarchist revolution, there were uh, acts of violence, so like killing of priests, for example, burning down of churches and so on, which were uh, unconscionable, but were a reaction of very oppressed people to uh, highly oppressive institutions, which had been crushing them for centuries. And when people liberate themselves, unpleasant things happen. Uh, anarchism is not a doctrine. Uh, nobody lay down the dogma. Uh, I think it should best be looked at as a, a kind of a tendency in uh, human thought and human action and human affairs, a tendency which is certainly based on principles. Uh, a fundamental principle is that uh, uh, authority is not self-legitimating. Our cameraman is on the spot, securing the first sound film interview in the trenches. We are here 
three miles from the capital of Spain. The town is under our eyes. The Spanish Civil War was the first truly media war of the modern age. Radio, film and poster art were all brought into play. The walls of the city, said one observer, became an anti-fascist art gallery. Ethel took no time settling in. From the moment she arrived, she recorded, commented on, explained events in Spain generally, and Barcelona specifically. She sent her articles home to Guy Aldred to print in news sheets and pamphlets. Our victory is sure, because the Spanish proletariat has the will to conquer. The almost superhuman determination of the workers on July 19th when they destroyed, without any preparation, the whole fascist army in Catalonia, will be repeated on the fronts of Andalusia and Aragon. From our cameraman in the vital northeast sector of the Spanish war front comes news that is no less important than the attack on the capital. For with the world's spotlights on the fight round Madrid, we're apt to forget that Catalonia and its capital, Barcelona, are by no means conquered. Day after day, along a hundred mile front, these men hold the lines against fierce attacks by forces of Moors, used by General Franco as his main spearhead. Ethel knew this war wasn't simply a war between left and right, between the democratically elected republic and the military. There were divisions opening on the left itself. She was an anarchist through and through. The coalition between Democrats, Communists and anarchists was of less interest to her than the defence of the revolution. She was at pains to distinguish right from the beginning the difference between anarchist and communist positions. The Spanish worker wants the assistance of the world proletariat to end once and for all class differences and exploitation. According to the communist Santiago Carrillo, we are fighting for a democratic republic, for a democratic and parliamentary republic. It should be clearly understood that we, the anarchists, are not fighting for the democratic republic. We are fighting for the triumph of the proletarian revolution. The revolution and the war are inseparable. Without your British government's consent, these troops could never have been brought across the Mediterranean. Without your apathy, the Moorish troops would never have entered Spain. The anarchists were organized around the CNT, the National Workers' Confederation, the largest trade union in Catalonia. From within the CNT, the Iberian Anarchist Federation, the FI, operated the political and campaigning arm of the movement. At this early stage, anarchists and communists were still working together, but the ideological and political differences were profound. At the start of the war, the Communist Party was very small. It probably had 3,000 members or so, compared with the hundreds of thousands who were in one way or another led by or influenced by the anarchists. They were small, but because they, if you like, because of the international connection, because of their connection with Russia, they had, if you like, a, an authority or a possible weight greater than their numbers. And therefore they went to the Republican government and offered their support, and in doing so, really they were kind of deploying the, the promise of, of, of Russian support too. Ethel wrote about everything. The progress of the front line, almost within hearing distance the tensions between the factions, the work done in collectivized villages and factories. Living and working in a city on edge waiting for attack 